Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this August 18th, 2016 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony, and you're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can listen to my show every, every evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Pacific Time, Monday through Friday on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. They also play the show at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, and if you can't go there, go to my longstanding website at ARCTIC.com. B-E-A-C-O-N dot com. That's arcticbeacon dot com. And you can get shows and articles going back over a decade regarding the Vatican-led New World Order. Okay, today is part nine of a series that I'm calling The Greatest Off-Broadway Stage Play Ever Produced in the History of Mankind. And that may be, that is, the Presidential Elections 2016. Now, if you've been following my series, which now has, wow, blossom, blossomed into nine parts, and it's well worth it, because the view that we're getting uh, from the powers that be emanating from the Vatican, the Jesuit order, is nothing more than a script that they are writing for us. And uh, they do it similar to the way Hollywood movies are produced. They, of course, I've shown in past episodes, they're the producers. Their main writers are the intelligent Jesuit order, the order of mili the military arm of the Vatican, who are known as the great educators. I call them the great miseducators. And what they've done is they've created a script that uh, basically is nothing more than uh, what a Hollywood uh, writer would do. They uh, get their marching orders from the producers, and I told you who those uh those are the Vatican being uh, a major player. Then we have Washington, D.C. Then we have the city of London. All three of these little entities are not a part of the countries they're in. They have separate laws. They have separate uh, everything, even a flag. And even they show us who they worship by their obelisks, representing who? They're worshiping the goddess Isis and other Greek gods. Oh, and other gods from Babylon and all those countries, the occult. That's what they're all about. And so they present a story that is completely deceptive. And it is an amazing story. And really, let's just boil it right down to this. There's a lot of people catching on to what they're doing. And the reason that we can't get our stories in is because it would change the movie script and they don't want that to happen. And any time that, even in their movies, there's uh, things that happen that kind of go haywire. They can't control everything because they're trying to mix reality with cinema, and they're trying to mix reality with fiction. And so things do go wrong, and any time they get close to going wrong, they have a backup plan, and they can always kind of talk their, double talk their way out of it. Now, Let's start today where, where we left off. And I said, now, now just to be clear, we've, we've outlined who the producers are. We outlined who the writers are. And these writers, they have been doing this a long time. Now, officially, since the 1500s, when the Jesuits were formed, and then they immediately started to... Uh, craft education in their in their style they immediately started Jesuit theater and I mean theater it was very very popular and they have a uh, they have a there's a in fact they did a show once showing how they brought Jesuit theater even to America and were instrumental in the movie industry here now they they've always at the same time uh, created a, what I call the real movie the real stage in the real political world and that is what we're talking about today they always seem to have a main show and that main show uh, is the presidential elections here in this country they have to reset everything every four years so what I was getting at was that once you understand how they do this once you understand who the producers are then you see it fall, falls in line just like a movie. They choose the actors, and then they choose, uh, in this case, the lead actors, 
we pointed them out, Obama, uh, Clinton, and Trump, and then they start their script. And we're in the middle of it now, 86, 85 days till election day. And let's just say this. Many people in this country already agree with me. I was listening to a pastor from Australia the other day say that many Americans think this is just theater. He basically was uh, chiming in on what I was saying, that it is theater. And it is all scripted. And I believe they even know who's going to win this election. And then they got it scripted out even past that. They have uh, basically, it, it all starts by, look at the books. The major book that they copy, they deceive, they uh, basically reverse is the Bible. It's one of the few religious books that haven't been written by the Vatican. Yes. Yes, and they from the beginning, and we're going to do a show, I promise, this week, but I got sidetracked on all this stuff. This is a huge topic, so you have to bear with me. I'm trying to be as organized as possible, but there's so many things that we could talk about. It's just like my mind is flashing now, like it's a, like I'm seeing a hundred million things that they're doing, and I'd love to insert the truth and just change their script a little bit. And boy, the, the, the seekers of truth that understand how they're doing this have tried, have tried. And boy, I'll tell you, as the, as the years go on, the less effective we're getting because their propaganda even grows. And it's amazing. And what they do basically is they reverse the Bible and they start out in Genesis. And I'm going to do a whole show on this to show you where it begins because, you know, this idea of same-sex marriage, Obama's uh, plan here you know, to legalize this is nothing more than changing the Word of God in Genesis, changing his grand, grand plan. And every step of the way, that's what they want to do. And so when you look at how they've operated over the centuries using this book, they realize in the end, God wins, right? But they're going to get away with as much dirty work as they can before that. And they want to take everybody down with them. And that's basically Satan's plan, and that's who they're working for. And so that's what we're up against. We're up against pure evil. And so how do we deal with it? Well, I think the best way is to understand it and then to fight it. And, and what I mean by fighting, I don't mean grabbing, you know, your fists and going, punching somebody. I'm talking about fight it with knowledge. Fight it with, you know, if everybody understood this was a movie, nobody basically... <laughs> <laughs> their plan would be shot. So they got to make it seem real. So every chance I get, I try to find a little piece of the pie that doesn't fit. And one of the linchpins of every one of their movies throughout the course of history has been a war that they create. And we're in the middle of showing how even the writers of this get involved in these wars. We've shown it throughout the course of uh, history. For example, we've pinpointed the Vatican connection to Hitler, the creation of Hitler, the Vatican and the Jesuit order's connections to Stalin, and how even Father Edmund Walsh was, a, was one of the uh, CIA-backed agents posing as a priest uh, who basically is uh, is on the White House. You can even find him being honored on Ike Eisenhower's web pay, website. Uh, and this Jesuit priest, Father Edmund Walsh, created the School of Foreign Service at Georgetown, which is nothing more than the, uh, I call it the, uh, it's the, uh, it's where the writer's union of the Vatican sits, and they write out all these plays and scripts. They even wrote the Patriot Act prior to, uh, and that was a, a Jesuit lawyer named Mr. Vin Dem, wrote the Patriot Act prior to 9-11. Now, they're prepared, aren't they? And you're telling me they didn't know it was going to happen? Come on. Well, again, what we're talking about here is one of the things they use in every one of their scripts is war, right? We talked about it, and they're always involved in it. So someone said, Greg, okay, I believe you that they created ISIS. Even the actor Donald Trump has told you that Obama, he's saying it on the campaign trail. Obama is the founder of ISIS, and so is Hillary Clinton the co-founder. So, it's interesting. 
He, he even believes me. But I'm going to add a few more things and help him along a little bit because he's missing a few points. He's not bringing in the involvement of Rome and how these people became the founders of ISIS and who put them there because Obama basically is just an actor working for somebody and so is Clinton. And so, correct me if I'm wrong, but the war that we're facing now, everybody's saying it, we're in a war against ISIS, a terror group, a terrorist group that has grown by leaps and bounds. But who really created it? If he says that Obama's the founder, I think the founder goes even deeper than that. And I believe it started way back when the Vatican created Islam, because what this is turning into is a war between Islam and Christians. And right now, Christians are losing. Uh, they're being persecuted all over the world. In America, they're not being respected. And let's look at something here. Let's look at a few things. Then we're going to get back to the Jesuit who really was uh, had his hand in making sure ISIS grew, and that was Father Dal Oglio. And we talked about him yesterday, and I found out some new information about him. And you're going to see that what we're saying has a factual basis and should be included in this movie. But anyway, let's go back because we discussed that there is a very good chance, and I would say more than probable cause, that the Vatican wrote the Koran. And we've presented information on that in the past. So that shows you that these guys are really prepared. You see, they create the enemy, then they rub it up against Christianity. And by the way, they're not Christians. They they're, they're call themselves Catholics, but they're actually uh, a satanic organization. Catholicism has nothing to do with Christianity in a sense. They're hiding behind Jesus, and they're hiding behind the Bible, and it's a great plot. They, these guys got it all set up, they think. But anyway, let's go on the premise they did write it, because Muhammad didn't come into play until, what, 600, 700? And this, this idea of Islam now fighting against Christians cutting off Christians' heads. Uh, remember they even said that uh, ISIS just cut off a head of a Catholic priest in Normandy. Now, they also like to, basically, there's, they, on the surface, the Vatican will say they're fighting against this uh, terror, but they're really fomenting it. When you, look at, when you look at their support of Islam and what's happened in the past, and Let's go back to even Napoleon Bonaparte when they were writing this script. When speaking of the throne of Peter, or the throne of the Pope sits on, it says, When the French soldiers under General Bonaparte took possession of Rome, they found on the back of this uh, throne, in Arabic, this well-known sentence from the Koran, There is no God but Allah, and the Muhammad is prophet. Now that's in a book called The Two Babylons page 213, chapter 6. Now, another sign. Now, we know that they like to understand completely biblical and God's prophecies, and they like to twist them around and may even have written in their future uh, scripts how they are going to present themselves as the Messiah when actually they're the Antichrist. That is a thing they're planning. Uh, I've heard through the grapevine. Okay, you get these kind of uh, insiders uh, that give me some information. And but let's look at this for a second before we start piecing out the the similarities between Islam and Catholicism and all of the uh, Sharia law. Before we start doing all that stuff, which we'll do in future shows to show you how concise these writers are. There's a telltale sign of Vatican influence in how the Quran prophesizes. With the Quran's pages, uh, they're so-called prophecies. They, they, so we know that they must have, there's substantial evidence that these writers created Muhammad, wrote this book to create, back then, a way of 
uh, stamping out Christianity in the East, which was not Catholicism or under the throne of Rome. And it was a very, very effective method. And now if you look at the Middle East, the remaining Christians are being persecuted all the way in through Africa as well. Look at Nigeria now. Now, within these pages, these so-called prophecies, that now can easily be understood, look, as rather not a prophecy, but an agenda rather than prophecies that were literally penned by Vatican prelates for this very thing I just said. Now, here's an example given by a very shrewd, very smart researcher uh, from remnantofgod.org. And he says this, for example, in a commentary on the Quran, we see the following so-called prophecy. Now, this is interesting. Now, for any of you who think that the actor they have Obama playing, the, the role Obama is being given, is not to sympathize with uh, Islam, is not to allow ISIS to grow and to destroy Christianity and bring Islam to the West to fight against Christianity so that in their script they can kill as many people as possible and wipe out the West and the middle class and this kind of freedom we have here to create a whole new different thing. I don't think they're going to, you know, this war will end up and everybody's going to be under Sharia law. They will morph it into something I think even more fascist. <laughs> but anyway, we'll have to see how that works out. But listen to this. The so-called prophecy in the Quran isn't a prophecy. It's an agenda. And it says this. This is in, um, It says the hour will not be established until the sun rises from the west. And when the people see it, then whoever will be living on the surface of the earth will have faith. Now, the sun rising over the west means the east rising over the west, the uh, Islam rising up over the west, and that's in Bukhari, volume 6, book 60, number 59. Now, notice the logo for Obama's campaign, and if you look at it, it depicts the sun rising over the ultimate symbol of the west. The American flag. Is this why we have so many pictures and websites speaking of Obama as a messiah all over the world? Is this why we have a Muslim mafia right now in the USA? Is this why the Vatican is helping to spread tolerance towards Sharia law all across the globe? Is this why even Muslims continue to commit bloody acts of violence? They are still offered all sorts of benefits in the New World Order that will allow Sharia law to be implemented everywhere, and those that commit such crimes are completely ignored. Look at the World Trade Center. Look at the most uh, what happened at Fort Hood, all of the other terrorist attacks around the world. Is this why Muslims are burning Christians? Uh, speeches that bolster the sales of the Muslim Quran, inspire prayer rallies almost uh, every day that we see. Now think of this. Do you think, I think we should consider putting in this movie the fact that Rome and the Vatican invented Islam for the very same reason they invented Hitler's Third Reich. Now, this is why they're calling for now a jihad against Jews and Christians as we speak. I believe the killing in their movie they have planned is going to get much worse than the 165,000 persecuted every year right now. Now, let's look at some other things here in a second. You know, I want to get back to Father Daloglio. We only have five minutes, and my how time goes by here, but we only have a few minutes. Uh, and I want to get back to Father Daloglio. Okay, and I do, uh, I do want to pull this uh, <clears throat> from the Remnant of God website. It's a very good uh, analysis. Let me read it for you. It says, uh, by the way, uh, do you know that Obama is actually no more a Muslim than he is a Christian? He is more about the power aspect of things like anyone else in D.C. And this is the role he's playing. Uh, like all those, he knows 
nothing more than to bow to the producers. And I'm adding some of those words to make uh, my movie uh, interpretation valid, <laughs> so to speak. He knows bowing to the Pope is very advantageous to his career. And he'll, he'll get better parts in the end. Look at one of the movie make one of the guys who was the major player, Bill Clinton, and I'm adding this, uh, says he's going to be the head of the UN. He's going to get the real big part for his play, you know, for his uh, sucking up to the producers. Even Islam itself knows, knows bowing to the Pope will bless you politically. I've seen pictures of Yasser Arafat uh, bowing to Pope John Paul II. Why else do you? Uh, why else would there be talk of Obama following after Tony Blair and others to convert to Catholicism? Uh, time will tell whether he does. But especially since the New World Order is their baby to start with, little do they know their power is fleeting and will only last. And I think they do know this until Rome burns, as a real prophecy predicts, is to occur soon. That's in Revelation 18:9-18. Now, uh, I want to get to back to uh, Father Dalloglio in a second. Okay, and uh, do you remember what we said yesterday about we have all these, you know, acts of violence going on. We we see Obama's policies in this movie uh, have done, done nothing but destabilize Syria. That's where Father Dalloglio comes in. We'll get to in the second half hour. Again, I just want to emphasize a couple things. Then I want to talk to you a little bit about what Sharia law really is. And actually, uh, there's been Sharia law here in the United States already. We'll get into that in a minute. But when you look at all of the violence going on, you look at the destabilization of uh, uh, Syria, Libya, uh, what's going on in Egypt, what's going on in um, all over the Middle East, and all of the terrorist attacks, one occurring every 84 hours. The Pope has the right, uh, the audacity to say, quote, I do not believe it is right to identify Islam with violence. Is that why his actor, Obama, and Clinton don't even want to say radical Islam? They are sympathizers. They're bringing about, they create it, and now they're bringing about the violence. He says, quote, I don't like the Pope to speak, the Pope says, I don't like to speak about Islamic violence. And then he even had the audacity to say, if we speak about Islamic violence, now, this might be, this might be kind of a Freudian slip, I must speak about Catholic violence. But he doesn't really get into the Catholic violence that we talk about on this show. He's probably referring to a barroom brawl amongst Catholic uh, people in a bar or something. But for the Pope to claim that Islam isn't violent is appalling for so many reasons. Uh, but if his predecessors wrote the Quran, they demand Muslims not only to, they demand that Muslims bow to their authority as well. And they salute the Pope of Rome on camera. I've seen it. This Pope like I said, who took the Jesuit oath, and look what that is. It is the hands down the most violent and bloody oath ever penned by demon-possessed men in the history of the world. And while they talk this game of peace, nothing gives them greater enjoyment than to see Christians' heads get cut off. It's a no-brainer for demons to love killing Christians. So think about that. This movie that they write is very, very violent. It has every aspect of horror. And the only difference is it's real. The blood is real blood. It's not Hollywood blood. And it may even affect you in the coming uh, months and years, the way things are moving. And it's very, very interesting to look at who Donald Trump is. Now, a lot of times they put actors in there to give a message. And we can get into that as well in the second half hour, once I get through with Father Dalloglio. Because Trump's the newcomer, the big actor on the scene. And is he really there as a signpost? Some people say 
that he is put there. Uh, well, we know he's been hired by the, uh, the producers, but why did they do it? Could they have done it to show us that he's the last trumpeter? This is the last vestige of nationalism. And in that, is he going to win or is he going to lose? And if he loses or wins, it makes no difference because that last vestige of nationalism may be over anyway. Quite interesting. Back in three minutes on the investigative journal. The book of Revelation says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator for his holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Okay, we're back for the second half hour of the Investigative Journal on this August 18th, 2016 day on our calendar, and we're into part nine of the greatest off-Broadway stage play ever produced in the history of mankind, the presidential elections 2016. And uh, I was saying the other day, yes, yesterday in part eight, uh, when somebody asked me, Greg, the Jesuits aren't involved in creating ISIS, and I said, well... Let me give you an example of how they are. And I brought up the story of Father Paolo Dall'Oglio. He was born on November 17, 1954. He's an Italian Jesuit priest. Claims he's a peace activist. I think he's nothing more than a CIA agent 
making sure the arms and the uh, ISIS movement to create this uh, radical Islamic terrorist organization now in 28 countries. Uh, he was there to make sure it works and make sure it operates. Uh, man speaks uh, speaks the language perfectly. His uh, educational background is impeccable, and he hides behind the cloak of a priest, and he is a Jesuit. Now listen to his story. He'd worked with the rebels there in Syria, right? He was exiled, thrown out of Syria by the government of Bashar Assad in 2012 for his involvement with the opposition and criticizing the actions of the Assad regime during the Syrian civil war. Doesn't that tell you that even the writers of this play, you know, Jesuits being the writers, put their men in there to make sure things work out their way? What did we try to do in Syria? We were trying to overthrow the Assad regime, right? That's what destabilized Syria and created this huge problem of, uh, in, you know, migration into into Europe and into America, which is leading to all these terrorist attacks. And guess who was fomenting it and making sure it happened? Father Daloglio. Now, listen to this. When when he when it was getting front page news or so, even in Europe and other places that he was involved. They had to spin the story, and they said on July 29th, 2013, he was kidnapped by the rebels, and unconfirmed uh, reports, unconfirmed reports said that Del Oglio was executed, killed by ISIS. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Well, did first of all, there's articles talking that he crossed the line and he was involved with Assad's throw, uh, with the coup to get rid of Assad and creating ISIS and making sure ISIS grew from what Obama, his, the big actor in America, was calling just a JV team. But think about it. They had to make it look as if he was a martyr. He wasn't working with the rebels. They killed him. How could he be doing that? He was trying to form, to, to bring peace to both sides. What a bunch of BS. He was there making sure the arms, all the weapons were getting to them, making sure things run, run smoothly. And what better way to have a man there than a priest? They've been doing this for years. They did it in every war. They did it even in the Revolutionary War, if you really want to understand it. These are the stories that all of the writers who want to turn this fake Hollywood movie into the truth try to get into the play, but they can't because it is controlled by this very powerful organization. And ask yourself these questions. Why would Islamist rebels kidnap and execute their Jesuit advocator? Was the kidnapping a false flag? I believe it was. Was the kidnapping a Jesuit job to cover up the Jesuit marks on ISIS's formation? I believe it was. Was Paulo del Oglio kidnapped 19 days after he revealed too much of his Jesuit role in the ISIS formation in an interview with SyriaDeeply.org? Yes. So guess what? I presented some excerpts of that interview yesterday, but you got to listen to this. Now, this came out just recently, okay? This came out just recently regarding Del Oglio, and here's the latest developments that came out just months ago. Information obtained, obtained by news sources confirms that Father Paulo El Del Oglio is still alive, but he's being held by ISIS. Yes, he's probably playing golf somewhere with them. He was transferred a long time ago to Raqqa's northern countryside, specifically to the Talibat area near the Turkish border. Negotiations supposedly then were renewed between the Italian government, and they've joined into these negotiations directly. Information also indicates that an Italian delegation visited the area about a month ago, met with Dalloglio, and sat with him for two hours. Now, where is this story in the main movie? When we, when the Trump, the actor, wants to say that Obama is the creator, I think we should add that 
these guys are all working for the, uh, the Jesuits in the Vatican. These are the ones that are helping create it. And the important thing with that is that then we get to the real truth. We could get to so many truths. What about when we talk about the borders? Mr. Trump loves to say he wants a closed border. And he says drugs are pouring in, pouring in. But who's pouring in those drugs? And where are they coming from? And do we, does he ever bring up the story of Gladio? I can tell him a lot about that because I lived it back in the 80s in Rome. And the very government that he's talking about is funneling the drugs here. And their big cash cow is in Afghanistan. That's where all the poppy fields are, and that's why our military is there. That would be a great part of the story. They leave that out. They make it just seem like there's these nasty drug cartels that are basically outdoing the greatest government and the, and the greatest military in the world. But when they get help from them, and they profit from it, when the government takes a cut of this and use it to fund these wars, that part's left out. So the actors really are, are just reading their script, and they can't allow this information to get in, which would make it even a better movie, wouldn't it? <laughs> but anyway, so we have Del Oglio now is alive. We know it was a hoax. We know they had to get him out of there because they didn't want to. This is what I'm talking about. When they write this movie, which is a fiction at the presidential election level, but when their sitcoms and all their little games start creeping out because they're trying to mix reality with a movie, sometimes they have to cover their tracks. Things don't go always as planned, even in the reality TV, right? But So we know Del Oglio's alive, but isn't it interesting that you... Once I was, Greg, I got fired from a couple of radio stations because they said, you think there's a Jesuit under every rock? And I said, you bet I do. Now, in Syria, since the 80s, this this guy, this he was basically assigned to do this. This is why I'm saying they have these scripts written out. Now, listen to who he is. Dalloglio is was born in Rome. His father had held an important political position in the Christian Democratic Party. Right. I remember the Christian Democratic Party when I was there. That was the party that basically put the bomb, or their CIA people uh, did it, in the American newspaper to make it seem like there was some rebel group that hated Reagan that almost killed me. But guess what? His son joined the Italian Socialist Party in his youth. He began his clerical life with the Jesuit order. He studied philosophy at the University of Naples. In the early 80s, he went to Damascus to study Arabic and registered in the faculty of Sharia. So this guy knows about Sharia law, right? At the University of Damascus as an author, auditor. In 1982, he went to the monastery of St. Moses, the Abyssinian, uh, situated 80 kilometers north of Damascus, which was abandoned at the time. Uh, Del Oglio played a key role in renovating the monastery starting in 1984. In 1989, he obtained a Ph.D. degree from the Pontifical Gregorian University, where he wrote his doctoral dissertation on the concept, hope in Islam, concept of hope in Islam. Now, what is his role in this battle? This bat Look, where did, in any of the things we're talking about here, did he talk about saving souls, about the role of Christianity, the role... He, this is a political organization, the Jesuits and the Vatican. They're more concerned about the concept of hope in Islam in order to destroy Christianity. That's what he was studying. Now, in 2010, he issued a statement in which he denied connection to the uh, Abrahamic path, and the Syrian authorities considered him a Jewish pilgrim deeply involved in the conflict with Israel. During the Syrian crisis, the priest sparked controversy on a number of occasions because of the positions he took in support of the revolution. Okay, that's where we got now. And basically, I would love to get him and the actress Hillary Clinton together and talk about where some of the arms were going to Syria from Libya. Okay? And she says now she has no knowledge of it. But I bet you they were going directly 
to Oglio because he was there to kind of control things. That would be a nice conversation, wouldn't it be, if they ever told the truth? Because now even the Congress, some of the supporting actors, are ac asking the actress Hillary if she knew about all these American weapons that were going into the hands of ISIS. And she says, I, I don't know anything about that. Oh, I wonder. And I wonder if Daloglio knows anything about that. These are really things that should be in this movie. Maybe we should tell Mr. Trump uh, to do that. But you know what? Not much of a hope there because this is basically scripted and he has to follow a certain script. Now it might be interesting here and not to belabor Sharia law which I want to do in another show and also show you the similarities of Islam, Catholicism, how Islam and over 109 verses in the Quran is very violent and it's an open-ended violence in Islam that differs from the certain uh, uh, passages in the uh, Old Testament that are violent, which are tied to a, a historical story. There's a difference. And I believe when the Vatican wrote it, they had this in mind. Because Sharia law is very complicated. And I might add just one thing to whet your interest before I play this little tape about Donald Trump by a priest or a pastor from Australia. There is Sharia law in America. The last two states to ban Sharia were North Carolina, which prohibited state judges from considering Islamic law in family cases. However, there, there are way, now there are movements to allow this to occur in America, just like it is in England now, where there are over 46 Sharia courts allowed to practice within London. Now, in Alabama, in, two th in Alabama, voters passed an amendment to the state constitution to ban Sharia in the 2014, 72% to 28%. So I just wanted to whet your interest on that. But why don't we do this just to change the subject and uh, come back to Sharia and all these things regarding Islam and this ISIS war they're creating? But let's talk about the actor again. Why is Trump there? It's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, scenario. Now, this pastor is pointing out some things. Now, as you know, I do not subscribe to the fact that he's on the good side. I subscribe to the fact that he's there for a reason. And they always have to tell us what they're going to do. And if we read between the lines on what this pastor is going to say, could it be that he's been there to put to let us realize this will be the, he's the trumpeteer the final trumpeter that's telling us what's to come the last vestige of nationalism of freedom and he is there as our last shining hope but the hope is that in the case of this play that Hillary Clinton and her globalist agenda her Vatican agenda will not you know, will not, uh, will basically not be victorious over the, the beauty in, of America, which has fought for freedom, etc., etc. But have they staged this and planned it all out in whichever way it goes? And I believe they know which way it goes. Uh, and I believe Clinton will be victorious. Even if he was, what would they do with him? And how would they script it out? And it's very very interesting but let's listen to this pastor talk about this and remember this they always use the Bible and whether they reverse it whether they put people there and deceive you with it they use certain signposts and this pastor talks about that let's listen to what he has to say okay now this is a pastor from Australia who's commenting on Donald Trump in prophecy the aim of the American founding fathers was freedom of religion. That's why they fled the persecution, the inquisition that they faced, mainly from the Catholics. And uh, they came over to America or went over to America. We're here in Australia. They went over to America for freedom of religion, not freedom from religion, which is what the atheists and secularists have made it to be. But they were pursuing freedom of religion, meaning they were free to follow 
uh, whatever church, be involved in any denomination. They were not forced into a state-controlled religion. In fact, if we follow the Bible, we must say that preachers can and must talk about politics. I'll give you four scriptures so that all the people who are not convinced may see it from the Bible. And it's up to you whether you believe the Bible or not. But I'm just going to say the Bible. Samuel spoke of David replacing Saul as king. That is a purely political message. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. The Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Okay, so he gives you a few more verses there, and I'm going to get back to him in a minute when he gets more specific on Trump. But I did want to mention his analysis about why our Founding Fathers created this country. Yes, uh, on the surface, for freedom of religion, but I believe they had a hidden agenda with the Jesuits in the Vatican. Because in, if you look at what happened in history, they came over to get rid of Catholic persecution, but Catholicism is, this is a Catholic country now. How did that happen? Try to answer that. That's a great subject, which, boy, I tell you, love to write a book on that one. Uh, let's get back to the pastor talking about Trump. Okay, here we go. So I want to freely speak a prophetic word concerning what is going on in America. I believe that names can be prophetic. We've just covered that in how to interpret the Bible and dreams. All right? So if you haven't heard that, you need to go back and listen to that. But many pundits, many people in the media, which are mainly secularists, they're not Christian, many people in the media don't understand the Trump phenomenon. So if you listen to the media, you would think people hate Trump. But it's absolutely not true. He's extremely popular. The people who hate him are the left-wing media. And they're in control and they're in charge of what kind of information we get fed. But he is a phenomenon right now and people don't understand. His detractors say that he's flip-flopped on issues. And they may be right. They say that he isn't a true conservative by the American definition. They may be right. They accuse him of being sexist of him being racist, and I don't think there's proof of that, but those are the claims. What I want to try to answer is, why is he popular? I'm not going to try to convince you, I'm not saying I have all the answers, and you don't have to believe me, but the question remains, why is he so popular, and is Donald Trump prophetic? Would you like to know? Okay, Take this as a Christian perspective. I have nothing to gain from this. I am not American. I live in Melbourne, Australia. I don't vote. I've never voted in any American election. So this is not a political thing. This is a Christian perspective on something that seems a phenomenon that people can't explain. First of all, one of the reasons why Donald Trump may be popular is he is considered the only outsider. Meaning that right now he's the only self-funding non-politician. If people really want change, and the thing that they hate is what the politicians do, but the option is to get more politicians into power, then maybe nothing will change. And Americans are getting the feeling that the Republicans and the Democrats are really playing on the same team. They're actually the same side, and the whole election process is theater. That's how many Americans feel. So when you look at Trump, you find he's the only one, maybe the only one ever, who is completely self-funded. What does that mean? It means that he doesn't receive money from any lobbyists or special interests. Whether you like him or not, he refuses to be influenced by anyone's money. That makes him interesting to many people. Now, there is somebody that is supposed to be libertarian and Christian, but he has received a lot of money from the outside. And so there's conflict among the Christians because Christians want to vote for people who are very overtly Christian. And yet, if you want change, 
And every president says they're Christian. Every president so far, 44 of them, this would be the 45th, every one of them claim to be Christian. And yet if they're influenced by money from the outside, that may not achieve God's purposes or righteousness. Now, this is a fact, okay? This is how much money presidential candidates have received from Wall Street donors. Wall Street don't give money away freely, right? They give, it's because it's a legal way to bribe. It's a legal way to exert their own agenda on powerful people. Now, the person who's received the most, $11 million, is Ted Cruz. The second person who's received the most is Bush, Jeb Bush, his brother, $7 million. Hillary Clinton, $5.2 million. That's not a lot for Clinton because she's received hundreds of millions from the Muslims, uh, from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, all this. Uh, Chris Christie, not, no longer in there, Walker, Rubio, all these guys, uh, no longer there, but they just receive millions of dollars, it seems, from Wall Street. Well, you and I don't get millions of dollars from Wall Street. Do you? No, because they got nothing to gain from giving it to us. So this becomes a question to people, even Christians. Who do we vote for if they're getting money from these special interest groups that have imploded the American economy in 2008, and it seems like they're doing it again? And when people are suffering, they, you know, they got the government to bail the banks out. Why would you bail the banks out if the banks were the ones that caused the global meltdown? You would let, if you're free market, you just let the banks fail and let competition you know, work its course. Another reason that Donald Trump may be popular is that his counterpart, the current president, is very overtly pro-Islam. He's a president who goes into mosques and makes a lot of speeches about Islamophobia. He's not as concerned about Islamic terror as Islamophobia. He doesn't want people to be afraid of Muslims, uh, but he doesn't say very much about the Muslim terror. On the other hand, Donald Trump has publicly come out waving his mother's Bible and publicly said, I love the Bible. It's the best book. He says he's written a bestseller, but the Bible's the best book in the world. Now, Christians rightly would question, what well, is this real? Is this true? But it doesn't do away with the fact that He's probably popular because he comes out and say it. His okay. counterpart won't even say he... Okay, his counterpart uh, won't even say that and is very sympathetic to Muslims. And I'm going to break that off because I've run out of time. But you know what? If you liked what you heard there, and you're going to... Boy, I'm going to play some more tomorrow. You're going to find some real interesting things that this pastor is saying about Trump. And uh, come back, and we'll continue this greatest show on earth, the... 2016 presidential elections, looking at it through the lens of nothing more than a moviegoer who's interested in how they created this whole thing. Back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. Visit crosstheborder.org, C R O S S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book. The rapture will be canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people 
and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org.